Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to be talking about something that is super close to my heart and that is my ceramics journey. And I also have all of my pots behind me, so I'm going to be showing you some of the finished products that I've made. And also you get to see my entire process. I signed up for my first pottery class almost two and a half years ago at this really unassuming community studio by my apartment. It really wasn't the prettiest or the most spacious, but it was a 10 minute bike ride away and that's kind of all I needed it to be. I find that most people prefer either wheel or hand building and I'm for sure part of the former because I really love the way that wheel feels and it's so much more fun to have to work alongside something. Every wheel thrown pot begins the same way by wedging out the clay and this is probably the least fun part because if you try to cut corners, the entire thing falls apart. And wedging out clay homogenizes it and presses out all of the bubbles so your pieces doesn't flop over while throwing or worse, explode in the kiln. Next is throwing the piece onto the wheel and centering it. And I think I've learned the most about myself in the days, if not weeks, I've spent cumulatively centering. I'm a very headstrong person and if something doesn't go my way, I usually spend a lot of futile time trying to make it go my way and you can get pretty far in life by doing that but at some point you will run into your own immovable forces and centering is a process that's so intimately tied to physics and how you feel when i'm mad the clay can almost tell and it spins wildly out of control but when my mind is at peace and my intentions are clear the clay happily presses into itself into a neat little donut and i often get the sense that clay can read me better than most people can Then we move on to opening and I really like to close my eyes during this because you can feel everything happening all at once and you're creating the floor, the wall, the lip, so just savor it and I really take my time to flatten the floor as well because building a strong foundation means anything else I create on top of it will stand very strong and then your piece can be taller. For whatever piece I make, I usually start with a cylinder. And to do that, I use a little sponge and keep the clay damp while my inside and outside hand press together and squeeze the clay all the way to the top. If you add just the right amount of pressure and angle of the force onto the sides, that means that the clay has nowhere else to go but up, and this is what creates all the height. By the point you reach the height you need, which is probably like two to three pulls if you're really good, or a million if you're just trying to learn, then you should have already kind of made up your mind about what the pot will look like. I'm really bad at following my own advice because a lot of times I have no idea what I want to make until the shape kind of seemingly appears on its own, but I don't really mind this indecision actually. None of my pieces are ever sold or anything that doesn't just sit in my own living room is given away to my friends, so if it doesn't come out perfect, it's okay, and I'm kind of letting myself indulge in this little treat of the mystery. It's refreshing in a life where I'm constantly asked about what I'm going to do next. So for example, the most frequently asked question I hear when I say that I'm getting my PhD is, oh, what are you going to do with that? And I spend more time worrying about my next step and how to perfectly fall into that next step that I never remember to soak in the present moment. And that's why I'm also so addicted to making ceramics because it completely transport me out of this linear flow of time where I'm thinking about the future, kind of remembering the past and it makes me a terrible person to follow through with plans though because more likely than not i'm late to whatever i have to go to after studio and i'm so lost just in that present moment and the last but most important thing i've learned which has changed my process and has taken my work to the next level is to clean up the pot before taking it off the wheel and the final touches often take much longer and everyone kind of gives this unfair um, importance onto centering and lifting. But in fact, I would say that perfecting the lip and scraping off all the excess slip or the extra wet clay off the body and trimming the excess off the bottom is more than half the process. My first teacher told me that the more work you put into each step, the easier the next step will be. And obviously she was so right because when you move on to trimming, you will be so glad that you invested this effort. From a purely anecdotal survey of my friends, it seems that trimming is probably most people's favorite part. And I only assume this because you get these 
really wonderfully satisfying noodles of clay dancing off the pot with each layer that is trimmed off. And this is also the step where you get to see the final shape of the pot you're making before you're firing it in the kiln for the first time. And if you like things like handles, this is also the time to add them as well. By a very loose count, glazing is most people's least favorite part, and that's the next step. I get why it's really unpredictable, and glaze is definitely someone with a lot of mood swings. Glaze is super temperamental if it's not made right, and it's a downright headache if you don't mix it properly before dipping. And don't even get me started on dipping and how hard it is to truly achieve something perfect each time. But fortunately, like with my throwing, I have a very laissez-faire attitude about it. I'm really surprised by a good combination, and I'm only ever mildly disappointed by a bad glaze combination. Another really good piece of advice I got when I first started was don't get attached to anything you make at any time because you can fuck it up when you throw. You can completely ruin a piece when you trim. I've trimmed through so many bottoms of pieces. Um, you can take it out of the kiln and drop it. Anything can happen and a piece doesn't really truly belong to you until you're ultimately finished and you take it out of the kiln for the second time and it's actually done. So I hope you learned something about my ceramic process today and I hope you learned something about me as well. I am truly, really, really lucky to have found this craft that has changed me so much. And to anyone who's ever told me that I've inspired them to take a pottery class, thank you. That makes me so happy. And I hope that this video uh, made you want to try clay as well. And the best piece of advice I can give to anyone who wants to start doing ceramics is to just bite the bullet and sign up and find somewhere close by. Because going every day is so important because like everything else in life, practice makes perfect. And of course, there are people who are naturally talented or intuitive when it comes to clay. But I promise you that having a convenient studio helps a lot. All right, as promised, I wanted to show you some of my finished pots. So just for a little bit of context, I've been doing pottery for about two years now. And it's definitely like a part-time hobby. I'm not like a professional by any means, but I really like practicing and I go in when I have the chance. I'm showing you here my first ever piece that I made when I was literally like learning how to throw and I, I had no idea what I was doing. So looking back on it, the inside walls, for example, are like pretty thick towards the bottom here. But you know what? That's not a bad pull for a beginner. And I would say that I would definitely kind of even out this floor a lot more because you can see the ridges there and also the bottom is completely untrimmed this i think i wired probably just straight off of the wheel without a bat even and that's why it's super uneven here or unfinished looking i still use it all the time i put kimchi in there or like other little side dishes for dinner so when you're a beginner the shape you start out making are just cylinders and that lends itself really well to making cups and and mugs so I made a ton of mugs and cups that are no longer in my home because I've given them away to so many people but here are just two representative ones this one I made actually with a matching vase and I can show you that so I, I dipped everything in this one kind of brown warm color and then I put a chrome oxide on top that's the really cool green kind of dripping and if you look really closely, there's actually a different white glaze that I layer on top to give it a lot more dimension. I never really make the same thing over and over again, but that's because I don't really sell my pottery at all and I'm not producing these to sell. It's kind of one of a kind and yeah, I think these I'm still really proud of and that's why I've kept them. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know I make a lot of matcha sets and it's because it's actually useful to my day-to-day -day life. I love making matcha lattes in the morning and it's a little bit of a ritual. I really loved the way these turned out. I think uh, also because it was on dark clay and I got to really play with how different glazes show up on top of different colored clay. And this one you can see, they're the same glaze, but this I just dipped a little bit longer and so it's a little bit thicker 
and the way it reacted in the kiln kind of created these two slightly different um, patterns and colors and that's honestly like why I love pottery too because even though I did actually try to make these fairly similar they turned out different but I loved the fact that they are different so as I mentioned earlier I am doing a little series of vases I threw a lot of these kind of very bulbous vases a while back and this glaze although it didn't turn out perfect I think ended up being pretty cool so I got gifted this crystal inclusion glaze. So that's, if you look closely, what these like bursts of white and blue are, background color, is a lot more muddy than I thought it would turn out. But that's just because um, different glazes have different cones or different temperatures they're supposed to be fired at. And if you work in a community studio, you know that you can't really be picky about that. They have like a certain cone that they usually work with. So this one didn't end up turning out how, uh, you know, like the packaging said it would, but I still think it's really cool. And it goes really well with some of the other vases that I hand painted. So this one is underglaze work that I did. Um, and then I dipped the entire thing in clear. If you don't know, I used to paint a lot. Then I turned away from that because it was just, I don't know, like it was a lot of pressure to make really perfect paintings and I feel like just seeing a very blank canvas or like a white paper really freaked me out to the point where I just didn't do art anymore and ceramics was the thing that made me want to explore my creativity again it's like the first time in a long time that I remember being really excited to paint something and decorating this pot was just so much fun the last pot that I have here is also the same color scheme as the series. This one is inspired by this photo that I took when I was in Hokkaido. We were exploring this volcanic mountain. I just really liked the way that the the ashy uh, sedimentary rock contrasted with the colors. For the brown, I layered um, this really fun kind of almost metallic Tomoku. This is a three-toned vase. So then I dipped everything in this cool spearmint color and I loved the way that the lighter green at the bottom kind of peeks through the more shiny metallic green on the top. This one is also going to be very nature inspired. So it is this really cool lotus leaf that I painted on and there is a cute little koi fish in there. I'm still deciding whether I want to paint the back or not, but I think I might just dip this in clear and fire it this weekend. This is one of the taller pieces I've made and this is where I'm playing with handles. And if this kind of looks familiar, it's because in the clips before, I'm actually remaking this just with two handles instead. This pot has taught me so much. I love this shape, but I didn't trim enough off the bottom, so it's very bottom heavy. And also, this used to have two handles, but one of them I accidentally um, bumped and it fell off. So now it's a one-handle guy, which is super cool, but I'm remaking one with two handles. And then also the lip here, I feel like is not prominent enough, or it's like a very weak lip compared to the, the rest of the structure. Um, so I'm remaking this guy, and that'll be the only thing that I've ever tried to replicate which is really cool and I still really love him. Um, I literally use him all the time for bouquets, but it's just a way for me to kind of almost learn from existing pots I've made. Oh, also, I for some reason decided to glaze the inside white when I should have just done it all matte black. An honorary mention is the first and only hand-built piece I've ever made. And I really love this plate still because I think that the green and the purple combination is super cool. Um, I liked the fact that I played with the edges and it has this really cool ribbing. Um, I literally freehanded this entire thing, so I just had a really round slab and I kind of introduced these ripples. And then I also really like this little pattern. So honestly, like maybe I'll make a couple more of these. For all the pieces that I had on hand to show you, it's taught me so much about myself and life. And I know that sounds so crazy and cheesy, 
but it's super true like i am so impatient but anyone who's ever done pottery will tell you that it is absolutely a practice in not getting attached to anything being patient also a practice of being highly intentional because you're making so many choices at every step of the process i hope you enjoyed this video and please leave me a comment if anything resonated with you. Thank you so, so much for watching. So please subscribe if you are so inclined. Can't wait to share more about pottery with you. There's going to be a studio vlog coming out soon, so keep your eyes out for that. And thank you again. Bye. You wanna say bye, Jelly Bean? No, she's asleep. Okay, bye. Good girl. Oh, sorry, I got lip gloss on ya. Good girl. Look at Jelly Bean in the background. She's gonna plop down on the couch. There we go. Yep. <laughs>